In the days that followed Naomi's death, her spirit rose from the grave, clad in her wedding ring, and wielding the broom her mother had buried her with. Welcome to School of Tales. In the bustling city of Lagos, Nigeria, there lived a young woman named Naomi, whose beauty and grace captured the hearts of all who knew her. Born into a modest family, Naomi's parents instilled in her a strong sense of kindness and compassion, shaping her into a selfless and caring individual. From a young age, Naomi harbored dreams of finding true love and building a life filled with happiness and joy. Little did she know that fate had something far more sinister in store for her. As Naomi blossomed into a radiant young woman, her path crossed with that of a wealthy and charming young man named Emeka. Their love story was the stuff of dreams, two souls destined to be together. As their relationship blossomed, envy and jealousy began to rear their ugly heads among Naomi's circle of friends. Ada, Ifoma, Chinwe, and Amara had been Naomi's friends for years. But beneath their smiles lurked feelings of envy and resentment. They watched with growing bitterness as Naomi's happiness seemed to eclipse their own desires. On the day of Naomi's wedding to Emeka, the village was alive with excitement. Naomi looked radiant in her wedding gown, her eyes shining with happiness as she prepared to exchange vows with the love of her life. But amidst the celebration, a dark shadow loomed over the festivities. Ada, Ifoma, Chinwe, and Amara had hatched a sinister plan to eliminate Naomi once and for all. They were consumed by jealousy and resentment, determined to ensure that Naomi's happiness did not overshadow their own desires. As Naomi raised her glass in a toast to her future with Emeka, Ada watched with malicious satisfaction. The champagne had been laced with a deadly poison, carefully administered by Ifoma under the guise of friendship. Naomi took a sip of the poisoned champagne, unaware of the danger that lay within. Moments later, she collapsed in agony, her life slipping away before her eyes. Emeka's heart shattered as he watched his beloved bride succumb to the poison, his world crumbling around him. Naomi's mum cried and cried. So deeply her baby was gone. As Naomi lay on her deathbed, her mother, overcome with grief and suspicion, buried her daughter with a broom, a symbol of the foul play she suspected in her daughter's death. Little did she know that broom would become an instrument of vengeance in the hands of her daughter's restless spirit. In the days that followed Naomi's death, her spirit rose from the grave, clad in her wedding gown and wielding the broom her mother had buried her with. With a heart full of rage and betrayal, Naomi's ghost hunted down each of her former friends, striking them with the broom in a fit of ghostly revenge. At first, Ada, Ifoma, Chinwe, and Amara dismissed the sightings of Naomi's ghost as mere superstition. But as the attacks grew more frequent and violent, they became consumed by fear and paranoia. It wasn't long before the truth came to light. In a desperate bid for redemption, Ada finally confessed to her crimes, revealing the truth to the villagers and begging for forgiveness. As Naomi's spirit finally found peace, the village was left to grapple with the consequences of jealousy and betrayal. And though Naomi's life had ended in tragedy, her legacy lived on as a cautionary tale of the dangers of envy and deceit. But the story did not end there. Naomi's spirit continued to roam the streets of Lagos, her presence a haunting reminder of the consequences of envy and betrayal. And as the years passed, her legend grew, inspiring awe and fear in equal measure. For those who dared to cross her, there was no escaping the path of Naomi's ghostly vengeance.